Hello and welcome to a special interview with the former Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Khurshid Mahmood Kasuri. Whilst he was Foreign Minister for five years under General Musharraf as President, there was widespread speculation that India and Pakistan had made major advances on the back channel, including possibly an outline agreement on Kashmir. But just how accurate was that speculation? Here to talk about it for the first time and give us perhaps some idea of what the truth is, is Khurshid Mahmood Kasuri himself. Mr. Kasuri, there's a widespread belief that during the five years when you were Foreign Minister of Pakistan and General Musharraf was President, significant major advances were achieved between India and Pakistan on the back channel. How accurate is that speculation? It is, of course, very accurate, more than you can believe. Propriety stops me from really going into details, but I, I think you're absolutely right. So you're saying that more progress was made on the back channel than most people would believe? Yes, I am saying that. That's not an exaggeration. How could it be when President Zardari, in his very first interview from the Avane Sadar, uh, said that he was aware of how much progress had been made? So, in fact, President Zardari's comment wasn't a stray comment. It was corroboration of the background of advance that he was inheriting. It could never be. How could he issue such a statement on the very first day from the Avane Sadar? Let's try and build up an understanding of what was achieved step by step so that audiences can understand. To begin with, was there any understanding or agreement on Sir Creek? Sir Creek? I mean, what do you mean agreement? It was ready. Joint survey, joint maps, only political will was required. If the Prime Minister of India had come when we thought he would, we would have actually signed it and that would have created the right atmosphere for resolution of other uh, disputes, particularly the issue of Jammu and Kashmir. We needed the right atmosphere. So you're saying something very important on Sir Creek. There wasn't just understanding. There was virtually an agreement that I was ready. I would say it is what you're saying is perhaps accurate because you're saying there was almost an agreement. Almost an agreement. Almost because we had worked out everything. And you were in fact waiting for a visit from the Prime Minister to sign on the dotted line. My understanding was when he comes, we'll create the right atmosphere for going further on Kashmir. Now, what about Siachen? Was there an understanding or agreement on Siachen? There was a lot of understanding. In fact, we had worked out uh, certain schedules of disengagement and whereby Indian and Pakistani concerns would be met. And this was something that you felt the Indians were willing to stand up for and abide by? That was my impression because I was told at a very high level by an Indian official. So even though on the Siachen issue, you may not have been close to an agreement ready for signing, as was the case with Sir Creek. Nonetheless, there was a very close measure of understanding. I and would you say, uh, say among sections of the government of India, no government speaks with one voice, there was agreement. And given time, they would have convinced other parts of the Indian establishment. So once again, there was substantial progress on Siachen. Of course there was. Of course there was. Now, of course, between India and Pakistan, the big issue is Kashmir. Let me ask you, because this is the question that tantalizes everyone. How close were you to an understanding or an outline agreement on Kashmir? Well, you know, we divided the whole thing into four bits, and we tried to talk on each one of those. One was demilitarization. Uh, one was, uh, you know, some sort of regional regionalization in uh, both parts of Kashmir. I've forgotten the exact term. Uh, then there was uh, some sort of a joint mechanism, there was self-government or something of that nature. These were the four broad ideas under which we were discussing this. Let's begin to ask you about demilitarization. What did demilitarization involve? You see, Pakistan thought, and I'm sure the Indians would also believe that, that you cannot have an agreement on Kashmir unless you provide comfort to Kashmiris. We thought this would provide comfort to Kashmiris and the question was at what time and at what numbers, this is the sort of thing that was going But on. did demilitarization involve both countries withdrawing? Yes, it involved both countries. From their respective parts of Kashmir? Yes, it involved and the, sh the, you know, the schedules had not been agreed, but the principle was that this would provide comfort to Kashmiris. So the principle of demilitarization was more or less understood and accepted? It was understood. The details had not been worked out in the same manner as they had been for certain other uh, sections. The details being the schedule of withdrawal? 
Yes, of course, and that would, of course, depend on how much progress being made on others. But what you have said is that both sides were going to withdraw from their respective yes. areas of Kashmir. Yes, this is what uh, we were discussing. And it was a complete demilitarization in that sense. Well, let me, you know, propriety stops me from going into such details. All right. Now, you said that the second stage was some sort of regionalization. Does that mean that both sides were left free to divide up their respective territories in terms of sub-regions as they want? as they want, but the whole of it would be part of the arrangement. And then the third step was self-governance. Does yes. that mean that both sides would work out how they would give self-governance to their respective people, or was there an agreed form that both sides had to implement? You know, uh, because uh, to be very honest, I don't want to mislead your audience, I think we were working on more or less similar sort of things on both sides. Similar sort of things on more both sides? More or less, more or less, yes. But that's an indication of further understanding between the two parties. Well, if you want to know understanding, I'll tell you we even privately discussed when hopefully when the whole thing was done, we, neither side would proclaim victory. Because if you did that, it would be destructive of the whole spirit of the agreement. You mean to say that not only was there an understanding and what sounds like an outline agreement in the four parts that you've mentioned, but in addition, both sides had discussed... No, I mentioned three. I have not mentioned joint mechanism. Quite right. I was going to come to that in a yes, moment's time. Yes, yes. Let's come to joint mechanism in a moment's time. What you've preceded by saying is that not only was there understanding on these four parts, but in addition, both sides had an understanding how they would present this to the world. Yes, they would, because I'll tell you why. We had to first convince our own cabinets and our own parliament, and we couldn't do that. Now, we were political people. We knew what we could sell to people of Pakistan. They knew what they could sell to the people of India. And therefore, when I said to you that, you know, substantial progress has been made on all f four things, we also decided neither would proclaim victory. If you crowed victory, it would be destructive of the spirit of the agreement. And both were willing to deny themselves the right of crowing yes, victory. Both Otherwise, the whole thing would have fallen. Now, the fourth element of the package is one that we didn't talk about earlier. We sort of jumped to how it would be presented. For the audience's sake, let me repeat the three earlier elements before I ask you what, about the fourth element. The three earlier elements were demilitarization, regionalization, self-governance. The fourth element was a joint mechanism yes. that would link the two Kashmirs. Yes, absolutely. What sort of joint mechanism? Well, there would be representatives of our side of Kashmir, this side of Kashmir, and Pakistanis and Indians. And would this be a council? Would it be some sort of super parliamentary body? I won't, go, in, I won't body? go into details. They were supposed to look after certain subjects. I don't think it's appropriate for me to go further into details. But as you said, they were supposed to look after certain subjects. Yes, absolutely. So certain specific subjects. Where Indians and Pakistanis would be present, and so would the people from both parts of Kashmir, because you know that is how regionalization would work. I mean, this is how joint mechanism would So this joint mechanism would contain people from both parts of Kashmir as well as people from India and Pakistan? Yes, absolutely. In the same body? Yes. And it would have only power over certain designated specific subjects? Yes, that is correct. Would these be subjects that in a sense were common to both parts like tourism, like no, river, forest, go, water? I'm sorry, I can't go into details. I can't go. I'm sorry. But this mechanism yes. was one on which you had substantial understanding. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So you came very close, if I understand you correctly, to actually working out the outline of a solution for Kashmir, whereby both India and Pakistan and the Kashmiris would be satisfied. And in addition, both India and Pakistan had agreed that neither would claim victory and, in a sense, jointly present it to their own countries and the world. Yes, you see, we wanted Kashmiris to be involved, uh, to be very honest. We wanted Kashmiris to be involved, and India was not that keen. So we arrived at this modus vivendi that in, uh, your Kashmiris uh, would travel to Pakistan, our Kashmiris would travel here, they'd meet your leaders are there, and your Kashmiris meet our leaders. So an indirect form, we would have preferred a direct uh, uh, Kashmiri participation. But India preferred an indirect participation and but Pakistan... Oh, we, we thought we, the, we made so much progress and we might convince India. But Pakistan but was willing to go along with indirect rather than direct. Well, th that's the only option we had at that stage. Let me ask you, did the outline agreement on Kashmir, the four parts that you've mentioned, at all involve any exchange of territory? I am not going to go into details. As I told you, Nobody would proclaim victory. I cannot go into details. 
If no one would proclaim victory, it would lead the intelligent observer to assume that there could therefore not be an exchange of territory. Am I right in I'm that not, assumption? I'm not going to comment either way on what you're saying. So you're leaving this bit open to speculation? I'm not going to say anything even to this. Let me put it like this. Listening to you, I get the feeling that India and Pakistan had perhaps achieved more on the back channel than they ever have. Would I be right in saying that the relationship during the time when you were foreign minister and General Musharraf was president was perhaps the best that the two countries had had? Oh, I have no doubt because I could say the sort of thing privately to Indians that nobody has ever said before and I am sure they said the same things to me. We didn't say those things publicly. It's when you d develop a level of trust that you can say those things. Where were these back channel talks held out of curiosity? Were they held in either of the two capitals or in a third country? All over the world. All over the world? Yes, in different parts of the world. So you mean each back channel meeting was in a different city? i tell you what happened. That, uh, you know, certain suggestions were floated by Pakistan. Then uh, representatives met. Uh, Mr. Tariq Aziz remained from our side throughout. And uh, actually, you know, this the whole thing started with Mr. Brijesh Mishra. Although the concrete uh, non-papers didn't start then, uh, but the process started with him. And I must pay a compliment to both the governments, both Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee and Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. They both helped the process. The Indian back channel was Satinder Lamba for this period. Uh, it was first Mr. Dix. I told you it started during Mr. Um, uh, you know, Rajesh Mishra. Mishra, but not many details. Then Dixit took over. Dixit took over, details started. And then Lamba. Unfortunately, it died then, then Mr. Lamba took over. And as you say, the meetings were all over the world? Yes, in different parts of the world. So literally, it could have been as diverse as a meeting in Singapore, the next in Dubai, maybe even Europe thereafter. I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, you've got more out of me. You ferreted much more out of but me than But why were the meetings held in different places? Was this to ensure secrecy? Well, very simply, the foreign ministers meet. There are 500 uh, correspondents and camera people there. And therefore, you have to answer questions on the spot. You cannot build trust in that way. So you were deliberately holding meetings in different places to yeah. throw journalists off track? No, no, that's not the purpose. The purpose was to make progress. Why did these understandings and agreements not fructify? It's sh sheer bad luck. Sheer bad luck. You know, I can't tell you. We had hoped that, I think, somewhere in 2006 that Indian Prime Minister would come. But then there were, I think, you would know the dates, five elections, states, including UP. So perhaps the government here thought, that it would be more advisable to go afterwards. So we said, OK, fine. Now, can you believe it? That before we could invite him, Chief Justice Choudhury was removed in Pakistan. So first, it was the Indian elections, local elections, local, provincial elections, or state elections, as you would call them. Then the uh, Chief Justice, when we thought we'd call him, the entire national attention had been diverted towards the Chief Justice affair. So what you're saying is that politics in both countries, one after another, made it impossible to take these understandings or in outline agreements. In our case, agreements. misfortune, it was not politics, the removal of the Chief Justice. In India, many commentators writing in the papers including, I should add, Omar Abdullah, the present Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, who specifically said this in an interview to me, have said that the reason why these outline agreements did not fructify is because at the crucial moment, the Indian government backed off. Maybe it lost its courage of conviction. Uh, it's, uh, uh, not uh, I think. it's not appropriate for me to comment on that. But you're not confirming it. No, I'm neither denying nor confirming. It's not appropriate for me on to comment on the conduct of the government of India. You've given me a fairly clear idea of the extent of understanding, the outline agreements on Sakrik, possibly Siachen, the four areas of understanding on Kashmir. And you've agreed that, in fact, on the back channel, the two countries had a better relationship than they've ever had in the last 61 years. Let me ask you this. What was the relationship like between General Musharraf and Prime Minister Manmohan Singh? It was very good. It was very good. If it had not been, can you believe that both of them would announce in my presence, I was present in Delhi, that the process was irreversible? And what a shock that 10 terrorists could make it reversible? So you're saying to me that beyond the formal rhetoric, that the two men actually had 
a sense of trust in each other? They announced it publicly. They said the process was irreversible. But beyond what they announced publicly, in private, did you observe that they had trust? In oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about that. And they were prepared to make... Both thought they could do business with each other. And they were prepared to make concessions to help the other? Well, that's the only way you can make progress. Many people in India, perhaps because of his involvement in Kargil, have reservations about General Musharraf. As you saw him, because you were his foreign minister for five years, was he a genuine friend of India? He was a genuine friend of Pakistan. Because he thought that uh, peace in the South Asia was in Pakistan's interest also, not just in India's interest. So it was, in fact... And that was my belief, that peace between Pakistan and India serves Pakistan's national interest. And I know many sensible Indians who also believe that peace with Pakistan is in India's national interest. So you're saying he was a friend of Pakistan, but because he was a friend of Pakistan, it meant he was also a friend of India, because it was in Pakistan's interest to secure a good, lasting agreement. As was the case with many sensible Indians. What do you then make today of Asif Zardari, who has inherited from your government this background of understanding of outline agreements, including the four-phase thinking on Kashmir? Is he capable of taking this forward? Well, in, I know uh, about the intention because I told you that although I'm in the opposition, uh, but he did say in the very first press conference, uh, and he did refer to the back channel and the progress made therein, so it shows his intention. But General Musharraf had the complete support and loyalty of the army, which is a critical factor in Pakistan. Does Mr. Zardari have the support of the army, of General Kayani in particular, to make the same advances on Kashmir that General Musharraf might have? When I was foreign minister, General Kiani was DGISI. He's a very, very stable, erudite individual, thinking general, reads a lot of books. I don't know how many generals read books, but he reads a lot of books. And he was absolutely in on everything we were doing, because when the back channel was on, reports would be made. DGISI would always be there when the president was there and I was there. So I know that he supported the process. He supported all your outline agreements on Kashmir, on Siachen, on Sakhalin. Of course he did. All of them. Of course he did. And the deputy chief, the vice chief of the army staff, because General Musharraf was then chief, but he was also president. So vice chief of army staff used to be present in most meetings also. So you're saying that because his DGISI, General Kiani, supported all the progress that was achieved on the back channel, he's likely to support it now if Mr. Zardari decides yes, to take it further. Yes, that is what I'm saying. So lack of support from the army cannot hold Mr. Zardari back. I don't think so. The only thing that could hold him back is possibly his own lack of conviction. No, I think he's shown his intention that he wants to improve relations with India. One of the things that Mr. Zardari said in an interview to me, and this was said in March 2008 before he became president, but after the elections and after his government had been sworn in, was that India and Pakistan should no longer be held hostage to the UN resolutions, that they should find a way of putting Kashmir on the back burner, leaving it for later wiser generations to perhaps... I'm not going to comment on that at all. We made so much progress on the way we were doing things, so why should I comment on other statements? I've already told you quite a lot. And you believe that this is the way forward? Of course I believe in that. I think it serves the national interest of India. And I told you, many sensible Indians have told me it serves the national interest of, uh, national interest of Pakistan. And they have told me it serves the national interest of India. One last question before I take a break. If President Zardari were to choose to revive the back-channel work that was achieved when you were in office, do you believe the political system in Pakistan, the PMLN and ANP and all the other political parties would support him? There's one issue on which there is unanimity. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, even the leader of the MMA, Maulana Fazlur Rahman, my own party, ANP, MQM, are all for an honorable peace with India. Along the lines that you worked out on the back channels? Well, they don't know the details, but they want honorable peace, and we were working out for an honorable peace with India. You can't sell a dishonorable peace to the people of Pakistan. I'm sure you would agree with that. Let's take a break at that point, Mr. Kasuri. I want to come back and talk to you a little bit more about Pakistan. We'll be back in a moment's time. See you after the break. <laughs>